Hello, I was lucky enough to go to Gothic Valley WI last night where the lovely Layla showed us how to make some paper decorations. So there was this one and this one and also this one, but they all use a very similar technique. They've asked me to film it for them. So this is Layla's idea and her tutorial and I'm filming it for them. So what we need is some paper. Now you can use any kind of paper. You can use fancy paper like this. You can use paper from um, some sort of newspaper or magazine, your old WI Life, any of those sorts of things. So we need some paper. We need some glue stick and glue stick is best because we're using paper. We need scissors. If you're going to make the um, one that's like a flower, you will need some kind of thin stick. Um, if you're going to make the hanging ones, you will need some sort of thread and you can use embroidery thread, you can use string, you can use wool, you can use any of those kinds of things. If you want to add some beads along the bottom, they look nice, but it isn't necessary. Um, and those are the things, oh, and we obviously, we might need a little pencil there. So those are the things that we're going to do. I'm going to demonstrate it today with some pages from a book. Now, I'm just going to point out that this book was not a book that would have been used. It's the colour purple and half of it had fallen out. Um, and so it would have been heading just for the bin. I'm not advocating chopping up lovely paperbacks, especially not the colour purple, which is a good book. Okay, now for your squares, you can make yourself a template. You can, of course, use the trusty coaster, but you can also make a template. And to the one that I held up here, they were eight centimeter squares, um, which is what Layla was recommending. You can do any size that you want, and you need to have eight of them, okay? So if you want to pause your video and make sure you've got eight. If you're using a magazine, here is the bit where you might want to choose um, some nice ones. I'm just gonna rearrange those because I don't want loads and loads of white on. So I'm going to think, oh, that one might be a bit better. And I might choose that one instead of this one with a lot of white. I might do it like that, okay? So you can choose whatever you want. And you've got, oh, that's six. I'm not counting properly, am I? We need eight. Now, actually, this does work with different numbers. To start with, I'm gonna show you eight, but actually it works with a variety of numbers and you can try that around. If you don't have as much as eight, you can practice. Now we're going to do a fold where we go from corner to corner. So if I just move those out of the way so that you can totally see what we're doing, we're going to take this corner and fold it to that corner. So we have got a triangle. I'm not one for worrying about perfect accuracy, but if you want to make them all absolutely perfect so you can't see anything around, that's fine, you could do that. I'm just going to show you what to do. I will show you this piece of um, here. If you have a piece of uh, paper that has pattern on one side and plain on the other side, you are folding it so that the pattern is looking like that. You want the pattern on the inside today, otherwise you're gonna miss all of that nice bit. Obviously it doesn't matter with this one so much because it's two-sided, but if you do have one where it doesn't matter or you want a particular side, you want them on the inside. So that's what you're going to do. And we need to make a good fold, obviously. That's something that we like to do. Okay, and then we're going to do that with all eight of them. Okay, now I've got two already over there, and then we're going to do that nice fold, making sure we've got all of these triangles. So you will end up with eight triangles that are all more or less the same size. Oh, now that one matters, doesn't it? So I'm not going to fold it like that. I'm going to fold it like that because that's obviously the end of the chapter. So we're going to have those. So that's what you're gonna do, fold them together so that you've got all of your triangles. Now we're going to take two of our triangles and we're going to get our glue stick and you're going to glue around the edges. So if I pick that up, I glued there, there and there. PVA will work if that's the only kind of glue you've got, but you need then to wait for it to dry in between each one. Really the best glue for paper is glue stick. And if you aren't getting out much, they are available in supermarkets, you can do that. Now I've got one triangle and the other one and I'm going to put it on top. 
Layla said that this was a sandwich. So I'm going to put one triangle on top of the other triangle like that. So I'm going to put some glue again on my next one and then I'm going to stick it down on top. Now while you're sticking them down you want to make sure that your folded edge is along the bottom and that all your folded edges are nice and neatly lined up. I had already done two just to speed this up for you. So I'll pop that on top there. I did last night when I did this one, I was going pink, blue, pink, blue, but I did make a mistake and end up with two blues next to each other. But it is nice actually to do them in different colours and you can do alternate ones or you can do a complete rainbow all the way around, anything that you want to do. I'm going to have to check how many I've got now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need two more. One of the things you sometimes have to be careful of in um, using books and things like that is, you know, exactly what the words are saying when you're on there, what you want them to do, whether you want them to say something nice or making sure it isn't saying something that you didn't want it to say. So then we've got our eight stuck together all in a nice little circle, a uh, nice little triangle, sorry, like that, a sandwich. Okay. Now, if you want to even up your edges at this uh, at this stage, you absolutely can. If you're thinking that they're not sticking together perfectly, I never really worry too much about that kind of thing. But if you want to, you can do it. Now, eventually they are going to open up and your first one is going to stick to your last one like that. But before we do that, we need to add our string down the middle. So I'm gonna put that here and we're going to get our string. Now I'm going to use the embroidery cotton, I think, today, because it's colored and you can see it, but the string would work exactly the same way. And what you need to do is measure the same distance, and then how much more do you want it to hang? About that, perhaps. And I want a little bit at the bottom, so I'm gonna measure along. So I've got that kind of thing. If I put that down, perhaps you could see it a little bit better. And then I'm going to double that over. So if I cut it, I'll hold it up so that you can see it a little bit better there. Okay, so it's doubled so that we can have a loop like that. And it's about the length of my triangle along the folded edge with a bit hanging up there for a loop at that end and a bit hanging at the bottom for a tassel. And that's what we're doing. And then we're going to put some glue along this edge. This edge is a bit thicker now, if you see like that, and I'm going to run my glue along there. You can experiment with different types of paper and the uh, using the string and things like that as to see what you can, how, how it works, how you want it to look. It's all about your style and what you want it to do. And then you're just gonna lie your string along like that. So it's along all the way along the bottom. I'm just going to just push that like that. And then on one of these sides, which is the plain side for me, but it doesn't matter, we're going to do the same amount of gluing there, there, and there. And then we're going to pull, I'm gonna turn it around so that you you can see it that way rather than it looking at me. We're going to have our first page and our last page joined together like that. I'll just make sure I'm doing that for the camera there, there, right the way around. And then push your fingers along. My fingers are a little bit gluey now. And then slowly make sure it's all sorted out like that, hold up, and there you have it going around. So you can see that it didn't really matter that we had eight. Eight is a good number, it looks good, and if you want to practice, you can definitely do the eight like that, but you can do less, you can do more, you can experiment and see how you want that to look. So if you want to add a bead onto the bottom, that's what I've done with that one. You need to make sure that your bead can go through. Um, making sure that if you if you do have some thicker string um, on this one, I have got a bit of thicker string there, you need to make sure you've got a bigger bead and tie a little knot for it to finish. But then you end up with this lovely decoration. You could make that Christmassy, 
if you were using Christmas paper or you can just have it like that hanging up. Now as well as making them like that, your second stage is instead of using a square, you can use a circle. Once again, coaster, bottom of a glass, something like that to draw around. And you do the, um, get your circle and do just the same thing. Put it down onto your piece of paper, draw around until you've got eight and stick them together. And that is what that one is. I was trying to use some slightly more gothic colours here for gothic WI. And so that ends up like that. Now I have only used one, two, three, four, five, six on that one, just to show you a slightly different version. So you can see how that is with a different sort of bead on the end. Exactly the same technique, only using a circle instead. Now to make um, these ones, the shape has to be symmetrical. That's what Layla told us yesterday. So you then can make a variety of shapes as long as they're symmetrical. So this is a sort of tulip type shape. You could use a heart. You could use um, a different sort of flower. And in order to get it symmetrical, you need to have your um, piece of card that you're going to use for your template and you need to fold it in half. So we're folding that in half and drawing half a heart shape or folding it in half and using half a tulip shape. And you can experiment around with that as long as your shape is symmetrical. Um, so for the heart here, I've cut out some different ones. And so if I show you the stage, we've gone exactly the same way as we did before. We've had the squares and I cut them into, um, uh, folded them, sorry, into triangles and stuck them together. Now at this stage, I have drawn a half heart shape. So if you've made a heart like that, that is what half a heart looks like. And I've now drawn a half heart shape onto there. Now this isn't exactly what Layla did last night, but you can do it this way as well. Um, Layla last, last night did advocate drawing your heart onto each one and cutting it out. And that is absolutely fine and that works really well and that's a good idea. But you can also do it at this stage. If you stick them together, you can do it at this stage and then open them out and you still get the same idea. And I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six on that one. Okay, now I haven't stuck the thread in there because the other thing that Layla did say is if you actually chop off the bottom so that you have a flat bottom to it when you stick it together. So I'll stick that together now. When you stick that together, it will stand up. And so that is absolutely um, a different way of doing it. You can have that round like that. Um, if you don't want to do your string, if you don't want to put a string on, you can end up with it like that. Now I'll just show you how to do the tulip, which has um, five petals. So you are putting the um, uh, triangles together just the same way. You can take this and you can put it round, cut them out and stick them together. Or you can do, and this one I've deliberately done multicolored in different ways. So I'm gonna just stick those together very quickly for you so you can see what I'm doing. So that's the same thing, the same sandwich that we had before. And this is double-sided paper, but they I've just chosen the side that I wanted to be on the inside, but it would work either way. So I've got it like that. And I've got my template that I'm going to put onto there. So I've got my template folded in half. I'm going to go like that and then draw on it. So I'm going to draw the pattern and come around. So I'm hoping you're going to be able to see this in the paper. I have that's the half drawn like that and you're going to cut that out and again I say if you want to do it with the um, where you cut out every single tulip and do it that's fine as well now when you get your glue your um, stick here now again put the glue along that side and on one of the edges put the stick in and then pull it round and you're going to end up. Now, I'm just gonna have a little word about the number that you need when you're doing a flower. 
If you look back at some of my other tutorials on the YouTube channel, I talk about the power of five for a flower. For some reason, flowers are good if you use five. Okay, so we have five different ones there. One, two, three, four, five. And they just look particularly nice when it's five in a flower. With this one, I used all the same color. In that one, I've then used different colors. And um, I just added a couple of leaves on the bottom, but I just stuck around. And they're obviously gonna look really nice, stuck down in a vase or something like that. Looking good. You can have different heights, obviously, depending on your stick. Kebab sticks work quite well for those ones or anything that you've got around. You can even uh, find some sticks on your walk for that kind of thing. So as I say, thank you so much to Layla for the um, demonstration. It was her idea and I am simply filming it. You can have a square one. You can have a circular one. You can make them Christmassy. You can make them flowery. And if you don't want something hanging, you can even have them standing up. So there are loads of different ways to use those with all types of paper. Um, you can experiment with all kinds of ways to do it. Okay, so thank you very much Gothic Valley and I hope or everybody else who watches it will enjoy that. Goodbye.